Hello. My name is Frank, again. I'm right here to talk about the Word of God. Yes, I'm talking the Word of God frankly. That's very important. In other words, talk the Word of God as it is. And that's what I'm doing today. And also you must know this, that it's very important that if you talk about the Word of God frankly, you're free in your heart. And if you listen, you also do as the Word of God says. In other words, do as God says. In this case, as I said earlier, uh, we're going to talk about the second commandment of God. We talked about the first commandment earlier, uh, yesterday, but now we're going to talk about the, uh, the second commandment of God. Don't forget this as well. If you sin against God, it's not the end of the world. God will forgive you if you seek pardon from Him. That's very important. That's why the law is there. The law is there to show you sin. And then if you know you have sinned, then you go back to God and say, God, forgive me. And then God forgives you in that way. And people think, oh, the, the law is only for the Old Testament. Who said that? God never says that at all. You know, they say it's only the, for the Old Testament. But then the law shows sin. If you take off, off the law, take away the law, it means you also take away sin. That's, that's not, you can't do that because the law is not given by you, it was given by God. So in this case, uh, it, it, show, it, shows, it says that if, you, uh, if there is no law, there would be no sin. In other words, if you read uh, Romans 3 verse 20, that's what it says, because the, the law is the knowledge of sin. I hope you're clear there. If there's no law, there is no sin. And also people say, oh, we are saved by faith. We, d we do not need the law. That's not true. Because by faith, does it make void the law through faith? No. In Romans 3 verse 31, it says, God forbid, that does, the, the law does not make void, the faith does not uh, make void the law at all. Actually, uh, it, it establishes the law. So people must not talk words which are not there. In other words, they just talk and talk and talk. The other thing which I have to be very uh, apt to talk about here is um, uh, the law of God. There's a second one. I'm going to read it to you rather because it's quite a long, uh, long law, uh, which is actually in the book of Exodus chapter uh, 20 uh, from verse 4. It says, You shall not make for yourself a carved image or a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the, in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. The last bit here says, showing mercy to those who love me and keep my commandments. If you love God, keep his commandments. John 14 verse 15. Of course, yes. How can you say you love somebody if you don't even listen to them? How can a child say, I love you, daddy, but I don't want to listen to you? It's like a job, you know. Husband and wife, I love you, but I can't listen to you. It's like a joke still in there. Yeah. I'm saying, I love you, God, but I want to listen to what you're telling me. Also like a joke. So that's very important. Uh, this law, which I've just read to you now, the whole of it is not in the Roman Catholic Catechism. The Catechism is a book which they use to read. The catechumen are the ones who read it, learning the word of God. The whole of this law, which I've talked about, about graven images, is not there. Go find out. It's not there at all. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's right for people to bow down to graven images. I can't say that. I wouldn't do that. Because that's what God says. You shall not make for yourself a graven image. The first law was saying you shall, make, you sh you shall have no other gods in your mind. But this time he says... The second law says, you should not make yourself graven images. You make out of wood, stone, 
or whatever, then you bow down to them. You can't do that. God doesn't like that because he says, I'm a jealous God. I visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, the third and fourth generation. But the good thing with God is that he forgives. If you as a person forgives, then you're like God. That's very important. The other thing we have to talk about here is that people say, I'm saved by grace. Yes, saved by grace because Jesus died for us and then we are saved. It's not our work. But does it mean that I, should, I don't have to listen to the law? Of course, the law still stands there because that's the same law which is going to judge me in the end. Don't throw away the law because you're saved by faith. No. The grace of God. No. The grace of God is just His mercy for us because we can't do anything, do anything to please Him. So it's through His grace that we can do something through Jesus whereby we can do something. He makes us able to do it. That's very important. That's why you have to pin our hopes on him because he's able to make it happen in us. As a sinner, I can't do anything. But in God, I can do everything. That's very important. The other thing we have to say is that um, uh, the others say that in the Old Testament, you know, they used to say, uh, love God and love your neighbor. Those are the two laws which are there in the New Testament. It's true. It's written down there in the book of Matthew chapter 22, 37 to 40. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor. Are these new, new, new verses in the Bible? No, they are there in the Old Testament as well. Le Leviticus 19 verse 18 says, love your neighbor. Go read it. And then Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, it says, love your God with all your heart. Is there anything new? No. We just have to emphasize and pray and we have light from God all the time. This law is quite long because God wanted detail in it. He wanted detail. He explained it. He didn't want people to guess. He, he said, do not make. Sometimes people make, you make a car to be your idol because you bow down to it. I've seen people buying down to football managers like that. But that's the wrong way of bowing because you can't do that. It's only God who needs that type of homage. God only needs homage because he's the creator of heaven and also the creator of earth. That's why he's like that. I will die. Everybody in the world will die, but only God will never die. So at the end of the day, who holds my life? It's God. So I have to give homage only to him. He's the one who was before and will be after. It's very important. I'm only a messenger. I'm talking this word frankly. And that's why my name is Frank. Yes. For you as a person listening, make up your mind. Read the word. Understand it. And go on your knees and say, God, forgive me because I've wronged you. Because your law says this and I do opposite. So that's very important for you. That's your duty, you know, to go and obey God and make God your creator and, of course, obey him. Not just say, you're my creator and I don't want to obey you. So that's very important. So go back, go on your knees, pray and make God your God. And not look at people and don't make things out of your hand and make them to be gods. No. Next time around, we're going to look at the third law. The third law, of course, uh, read about it, is on verse 7, and we'll look at it in detail. That's very important. May God bless you tonight. May God bless you today. May God bless you everywhere you go, and make sure you do right. God loves you. Thank you.